Hello, my name is Harald Brandl. I'm the head of the Center of Competence of Image Science at the ARRI Camera R&D. And I'm here today to talk about the new log C curve in the Alexa 35. The existing log C curve you all know from ARRI cameras like the ARRI Mini LF or the ARRI Mini is the third version of the log C curve. We always just called it log C because there was only one version at a time. Log C1 was the transfer curve used in the D20 and D21 cameras. And the log C2 curve was only used for a short time in early software releases of the Alexa. But since 2011, there is only one log C curve, log C3 as we call it now. And I want to explain the differences to the new log C4. The log C3 curve was designed with 10-bit encoding in mind, because at that time, it was usual that ARRI raw images, for example, were pre-processed into 10-bit DPX. The log C curve, both the log C3 and 4, is exposure normalized, which means that the exposure index is considered in the log C curve. You see in the figure here that there is a distance of one stop between the different curves. So when you close, for example, the aperture by one stop and go from ISO 400 to ISO 800, you get the same overall brightness in the image. Because of the 10-bit encoding, we designed a few things into the log C3 curve. Uh, one is when you look at the figure very closely, you see that the linear part of the curve has different slopes for different exposure indices. That was done to maximize the quantization in the 10-bit space. Also, the function was piecewise defined. There is, for example, an additional shoulder implemented in the curve for 3200 ASA. The log C3 curve was very successful. The 10-bit quantization never caused any issues. And since many years, obviously, this uh, pre-processing into 10-bit DPX files is not done anymore. When you use the ARRI RAW SDK in a software, in your color guiding software, you will get the log C data in 16-bit. Color grading in log C worked very well, and it has been used in many, many productions. It's also a de facto industry standard. So for the new Alexa 35 camera, which has a much greater dynamic range, we needed a new log C4 curve. In the camera, the linear signal from the sensor is encoded in 18 bits. And the ARRI RAW, the new ARRI RAW format has 13 bits. We designed the log C4 curve for 12 bit because that is the bit depth used in the porous format and we are sure that it will work properly here too. We will also not support any 10-bit profiles in ProRes in the Alexa 35. Also, when you look at the figure here, you see now that the slope of the linear part of the curve is parallel for all exposure index values. There is no dependency anymore on the exposure index. This and the fact that the new formula is a single algebraic expression makes implementation of the forward and inverse transform much more easy. When you look at the figure more closely, you see now that all exposure index values have the same slope. So there is not a dependence here anymore from the exposure index. And also the curve is a single algebraic expression which makes implementing it or its inverse function much more easy. The most striking difference when you look at log C4 images compared to log C3 images is that they appear darker. In log C3, the reference level for middle gray was at 39%. In log C4, it's at 28%. But this lower slope of the curve creates the headroom we need in the Alexa 35. You see in the figure that the log C4 curve reaches its maximum value about two stops after the log C3 curve. That is the additional headroom we have in log C4 for the highlight dynamic and for the highlights uh, we can capture in the Alexa 35 camera. I want to show you this um, uh, in examples here in images. 
you see on the left hand side a image captured with a Alexa Mini and on the right hand side a image captured with the Alexa 35. The left image is in log C3 and the right image is in log C4. The log C4 image appears darker but when you look at the false color indication you see that they are very similar. The two cameras had a slightly different angle into the scene that's why the exposure in the cards it's a bit different but when I zoom in in the faces and you see here that the exposure is quite similar. Helen has on the fill side of her face uh, the exposure sits at one stop above a mid-gray that's the pink patch you see here and John having a darker skin sits at around mid-gray indicated by the green color. When you now turn both cameras into video output you see two very similar images because the tonal curve which converts log C3 into rec 709 and the tonal curve which converts log C4 into rec 709 they will compensate for the signal differences in the log C curves. You can use false color with Alexa 35 as you can use it with existing Alexas. There is no difference. And here again a look at the faces and you see that the exposure level and the brightness of the faces is very similar. So the false color which is a feature in all Alexa cameras it works the same no matter if it's an Alexa 35 or one of the earlier models. Purple indicates the begin of the signal that's where the signal has the same magnitude as the noise. Blue is the edge of where you start to see details and shadows. Green is the 18% middle gray. Pink is one stop over 18% middle gray. Yellow indicates you are now two third stops below clipping and red indicates you are one third stop below clipping. The difference is that the Alexa 35 has a much larger dynamic range. When you work with false color in both cameras the first four zones will be the same in both cameras. Yellow and red indicate the same relative point of one third and two third stops below clipping but that obviously in the Alexa 35 is much higher than in the other Alexa cameras. If you use a waveform monitor to measure exposure you have to consider that the signal value changes from log C3 to log C4. You see here a table with the signal values for one stop and two stops above mid gray, middle gray and one stop below. And <coughs> you see that 32 becomes 22.6 and 39.1 becomes 27.8 or 28. 46 becomes 34 and 54 becomes 40. If you work in visual effects and need to decode or linearize log C images, log C4 is much easier. You see here the decoding curves for log C3 on the left hand side and you see they are all slightly different for different exposure indices and at, for log C4 there is only one curve. So you do not need to consider the exposure index anymore when you convert log C4 images into linear scene values. On our website there is a log C white paper available. That white paper explains in detail how to implement the log C4 curve and the color space associated with it. This white paper is more intended for software engineers and visual effect technicians. There will be also a dynamic range white paper where we explain in more detail how we measure dynamic range, what we mean when we say a camera has a dynamic range of 17 stops and that also explains in more detail the differences between log C3 and log C4. This white paper is really intended for DITs and DUPs. Log C4 will be used in all new camera systems from now on. Existing camera systems stay with log C3 for monitoring and progress recording. We will offer a cost processing for Alexa LF images in the SDK into log C4. 
So when you shoot with a Alexa Mini LF, you have a choice of processing it into log C3 as before or into log C4 when you, for example, want to use it with material from the Alexa 35. So I hope I could explain you the differences between log C4 and log C3. And I also hope that you will be as successful with log C4 as you have been with log C3. Thank you very much and goodbye.